Well guys, I'm back. I'm going to do a kind of quick video. I decided to, uh, in conjunction with uh, the other project I'm working on, which is the wire recorder, which I'll do and be doing another video on here shortly, is work on the Atwater Kent. Uh, I usually work on two or three projects at a time. It just kind of keeps the monotony down. Uh, I've stripped the chassis and uh, both to clean it but also because virtually almost all the wiring in it is rubber uh, insulated and these are the wires here uh, as you can see they're pretty bad shape so just like any of the rubber wiring in the 30s early 40s it has hardened and breaks up. Uh, top side of the chassis, oh, uh, a couple of notes. One of quite interest is the fact that, uh, let me turn it around here, this chassis was used for two different models, the 812 and the 612, and they stamped out the 812 to show that the, this one was going to be built as a 612, but I just thought I'd show that to you. The other things to of note on here, rust is here, one little area here, because the power transformer sits here and the cover sits over that. You have two filter caps here. A little bit of rust right here, um, and the other spots right here. Other than that, the chassis seems to be like it's going to clean up just fine. Uh, I guess there is just a teeny bit. It's either rust or a little dirt right there. That's the only places it's got rust on it. doesn't warrant to really paint it. Uh, the underside got some discoloration from the tar from the power transformer. Uh, other than that, we've got the... These will have to be... I'll have to unrivet these. These are your caps. So uh, those are basically the same thing as your paper. They're paper caps is what they are. Anyway, I'll have to take these out. And then on the bottom side, there's a plate that's soldered into place. And you just heat it up. The plate comes off and then you can remove the capacitors and fit in new ones. Uh, otherwise, she's stripped down clean. Oh. The tuning condenser, of course it's got rubber wires I'll have to replace on it. Most of them seem to be alright, although um, some of them are starting to get a little hard. This one definitely went bad. Um, but at this point, just replace all of them and uh, get them all replaced. But that's your tuning condenser. Clean it up. Now, some of the other little dilemmas dealing with this is the fact that here's the power choke. It's, a, it's actually a single choke center tap, but they'll show on the schematic as a dual choke. I've yet to print the schematic off because there's going to be some things I want to show on it as we go along here. But deep inside, the insulation is broken down deep inside, and I haven't for sure decided what way. I may just use like liquid tape, or probably more likely, since I'm out of liquid tape, um, use uh, Chrono Dope. It's overkill, but. Um, it's a little thinner material to, than the liquid tape and it may get down in there so I can otherwise uh, these are potted um, basically with kind of like a tar like su substance you got to heat it up you pop the top off and heat it up in like an oven and bring it out and let it so you can slide it out and I really don't want to do that with transformer or uh, this in this case a choke that is in good condition 
So if I don't feel safe with these, even without putting the uh, Corona Dope on it, I've got cut off wheel, um, for the Dremel tool, and I may just kind of slice through here gently and cut this out to open this up a little bigger so I can get down in there and hopefully they're spreading out a little bit inside. Now the interstage audio transformer which is good too but it's not quite as bad um, where they go inside other than a couple of them there's still some insulation that I can work with so it may be alright uh, power transformer is good uh, a few other little things um, it's had one filter cap replaced I've already opened it up and I don't know if you can read that if I turn it just right but it was made uh, 9 of 45 which means September 1945 so this was replaced probably sometime in 45 or 46 what it had in it was this mess um, pretty well it completely dried out so as you can see um, Uh, a few other things when on this particular radio not all wires are wires these all of these are resistors some very low ohmage such as these two um, get them untangled here These two guys here, these are uh, filament dropping uh, shunts. They're fairly low, I don't remember the exact value. And then these are higher resistance. Some of these are like 1500 ohms, uh, some 1000 ohms. Uh, so the different lengths and colors but they're resistors nonetheless um, just a resistive wire and these since these are much higher uh, resistance my guess is is they've got a a core of some sort of material may even be asbestos or something that they wrap uh, a resistive wire around um, to get longer lengths of it so that you can get your uh, resistance you need uh, let's see, one of the, the regular um, cans that's in it, Electrolytics, was one I've never seen quite made the way it is. This is the inner electrode to be the positive. Uh, usually these are a lot different in design, but this one is a fairly healthy uh, aluminum that they've corrugated down into this thing and then um, actually formed on um, I don't think it's actually welded I think it was actually all part of the same metal the uh, stud that comes out the bottom uh, to hook your wires to so I've, I've never seen one quite like this one so it was of interest uh, there was a little dampness more or less dampness down the very bottom of it um, they have a insulator inside them like all of them do it insulates the outside can which is your negative from the inside part which is your positive plate uh, I've started checking some of the resistors I think these here are replacements there's a couple of them in here but the rest of them, uh, so far what I have spot checked seem to be good uh, on the money, or at least what they're supposed to be. Now, another few little things here. Uh, I told you about the neon indicator light. 
that it was missing. Well, it wasn't exactly missing. This is the socket for it, which is kind of nice. I don't know if you can see the screw in there, but to replace the wires, except for the one conductor here, the green wire is soldered on, but the other two are actually just uh, a screw that locks them into place. But when I took it out, here's the, so uh, the uh, light bulb socket itself, or the end of the light bulb. So it was um, got broke probably at some point, and or something happened to it, or maybe they tried removing it, didn't realize how it came out, and twisted it right off and pulled it right out of its end. I don't know. Uh, it appears maybe that might have been the case because... Uh, I don't see any any signs of broken glass in there. So I mean it, it fastens in just like any uh, bayonet type bulb. It just shoves in, push in tight and then turn and then let it sit back. Uh, let's see. The IFs are going to be fun. Um, Two of them have resistors, which are right here. Of course, the wires need to be replaced on them, but they're potted. Um, this one's not a problem. But I'll have to manage to get some of this cleaned off, especially if the resistor test not so good. And, and the thing is, this is going across the primary, so I have to actually get it disconnected from one end to even test it. Otherwise, I'm not getting an accurate reading. Uh, this guy here, besides the fact of taking it apart and have to replace the wires, uh, I don't know if someone had worked on this. Well, it was obvious it had been worked on. But what the deal was, when I pulled the can out, and these are the cans, this was smashed in pretty hard. You can kind of see the ripples in it and stuff. I straightened it some. But the reason why it was smashed in was underneath it was this nut and it had been taken loose and that nut was slid underneath there or something and then they tightened it down and which shoved this right down tight and it was actually smacking a little bit of the bottom here but it happened to be just the wood dowel that is the coil form so didn't harm the coil now I don't know if that was um, that nut you know goes to a control and there is a control that's right here but it appears to be factory and I believe that can came from right here but it appears to be factory uh, the control does it's at least of the age and it matches the resistance it's supposed to be. So <clears throat> it's possible that this actually happened at the factory. It could have been in there all that time. Uh, see, and then of course uh, the last IF transformer, the one that goes to the detector, it's got uh, two capacitors and I'm pretty darn sure that those are probably not any good anymore. So I'll have to replace those again. We're in potting, so I'm going to have to uh, dig that loose, experiment with some uh, mild chemicals or something, or something gentle to take that loose, or just kind of flake it loose. Don't want to use something that's going to hurt my enamel on the wire. Um, that would be detrimental. Uh, <clears throat> but everything tests good now when I get a schematic printed out I'm going to talk a little more about the power transformer but I'll give you a heads up on this this thing um, <laughs> transformer is the power supply on this is actually uh, two power supplies in one Hence the reason for the two output or two uh, rectifier tubes. Uh, now some some companies and some radios that have a lot of tubes in it, you'll see two rectifier tubes, but they're hooked in parallel to uh, allow for more current 
to uh, be drawn from the power supply uh, for the power supply to handle. But in this case, these guys are separate. They're not hooked together. Uh, there are two separate 5 volt windings and two separate high tension windings on it. One a low voltage, uh, lower voltage high tension around 400 volts, the other one around 600 volts. The higher one actually drives the audio section and uh, supplies power for it, the lower one for the rest of the radio. So, <clears throat> but the transformer is. I had tested it at least under no load and it worked just fine. So uh, the rest of this is just basically uh, digging into stuff and cleaning stuff. I'll uh, let you know where we're at on this guy here and what I decide to do with it and I'll show you. Um, you know th this is the power choke or choke in the power supply it's actually on the uh, 600 volt side so well actually be 300 volts there's the center tap and um, so I wanna you know make sure that we don't end up with any shorts there as well as the interstage audio transformer the primary is carrying uh, your B plus voltage as well so uh, I'll let you know what I find we'll get the chassis cleaned up I'll do something with these rust areas, um, probably just get them cleaned back to bare metal and then um, apply something like a, a clear lacquer or something. This is basically a plated chassis. Uh, you can kind of, uh, well you probably can't see it, but there's a little bit of plating flaking right, right at the edge of this. So these actually raise up a little bit. And when I first started kind of looking at it and kind of, I kind of brushed it a little bit, you could see a little green. Um, it's metal plated and generally when you do metal plating, probably a nickel or something of that nature, uh, what they do is they'll, over steel they'll put a, they'll plate them first with copper and then that makes nickel and chrome or, and those type of materials um, adhere better when plating. So, but I'll clean those up a little bit and uh, uh, like I say, about three of them spots. Uh, when the radio's <coughs> fully done, they're actually going to be fairly well hidden, although you could, if you were looking for them, you'd find them. So I'll try to, you know, clean them up, get any type of rust off and get them so that they're you know, coated uh, probably like with a clear lacquer or something so that they don't, uh, they're protected. So that's where we're at at this point. Uh, probably the next video will be on the wire recorder where I'm at on it. Uh, it's coming along just fine. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next video and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I've got to get back to some of you guys' comments that you made on on the stuff that I found and got on that last video and I will try to do that uh, today sometime and get this thing uploaded so um, I guess I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching